from the gun review uh, been a bit of a gap in these things been pretty busy but today we're looking at the uh, Keltec sub 2000 in 40 cal uh, I've seen a lot of reviews out there on the 9 millimeter version that seems to be somewhat the more popular one but I had more 40 cal laying around that I did 9 so I went with the 40 uh, as usual we're just gonna kind of start out with what the manufacturer is saying about this rifle uh, Keltec saying so the sub 2k is designed to be the most convenient 9mm or 40 caliber rifle available with an adjustable stock and uh, easy storage can accept most popular handgun magazines um, plus it's easily disassembled for cleaning and inspection so that's kind of what they're saying about it uh, currently at this time it's coming in uh, versions that accept Smith & Wesson M&P mags SIG P226 mags uh, Breda 92 and 96 mags and various Glock mags. So a lot of options out there and we'll kind of talk more about what kel is saying about this gun as we go. Um, moving right along, size and weight is great on this gun. Uh, I got this gun mostly as kind of a car gun. Uh, you can stash it away somewhere. It's easy to move. It's light. Um, the gun is about four and a quarter pounds, according to Keltec, unloaded, and it's, you know, short, I would say, even in the, uh, even in the open configuration like that, it's not long, it's slightly shorter than your kind of typical AR-15 with a collapsible stock and a 16-inch barrel. So, once folded down, though, pull the trigger guard here. Knock it up, and you're folded in half just like that. So you just cut the length in half, and now it can be easily stashed in a backpack or anywhere in your car that's out of sight. You know, and pretty much anywhere you want. It takes a matter of seconds to fold it, unfold it, and you're good to go. So size and weight on this gun are awesome. Uh, couldn't really be more happy with that. In fact. Uh, in some instances, I'd say it's almost too small. The front handguard here is really little. That's why I had to put the or the angle foregrip on so I a little more meat to grab onto because it is so small in the front there. But we'll talk more about that later. Actually, right now, we move on to ergonomics. So, ergonomically, this gun is... Eh, it's okay. Um, a lot of the other reviews I've seen for this gun are completely glowing. You know, it's the greatest, greatest thing ever. The sub 2K is, you know, the best pistol caliber carbine, etc., etc., etc. Is that wrong? So, I've heard a lot of that on the internet, and some of it's true. It's it is good. You know, it's a good pistol caliber carbine. It's probably not the best, and it does have its shortcomings. We're going to talk about some of that right now. Uh, ergonomics on this gun, like I said, the front end here is very slim. Um, you know, I can completely get my hand around it and I don't like holding it, that's why I put the angle foregrip on it. Uh, ergonomically speaking, the, you know, I don't really, I understand why the charging handle is here for the design of the gun and the folding mechanism, I get it. Ergonomically, it's not the best for me. I don't like reaching under there and charging it, and it just isn't that handy. The uh, grip here is a little short. It's made really for 10 round mags to fit flush right there, so when you put in like this 22 round mag, Glock mag, the, let's see if I can get this up here, the magazine itself really ends up making up the last part of your grip, which isn't like the end of the world, but it's just not as comfortable as having a real actual grip there. So ergonomically the gun isn't the greatest. Getting a cheek weld on this tube here, you might as well just give up it's not gonna happen um, in fact I actually had to get this little extra rubber pad because this gun is borderline uncomfortable to shoot in the 40 cal over an extended period of time uh, the amount of vibration recoil that you pick up off this tube as you're shooting is pretty heavy so I would not call this like a range toy or a gun you're gonna go to the range and 
shoot a ton of rounds through because it's just plain uncomfortable, to be honest with you. I mean, I like this gun, but I'm not going to go put, you know, 200 rounds through at the range. And the testing, usually about 100 rounds, and I would my cheek would be getting sore, and I'd be wanting to stop shooting this thing. So be aware of that, that this is probably not a super high rounds count gun in one day. The 9mm could be better, I don't know. I haven't shot it, um, but the 40 cal version, the, the recoil impulse on your cheek is kind of harsh. Ergonomically, that's that's pretty much it. The rest of the gun is, is good. You know, the sights are somewhat high, but they are relatively easy to pick up. All right, trigger pull uh, is terrible. <laughs> not going to beat around the bush it's it's just bad uh it is we'll give the uh safety double check here empty all right so it's really bad um give it a pull here for you guys Ugh. all right so Hold on a sec. There we go. All right. So, yeah, that's really long, basically, and about seven and a half pounds with some creep. And I don't know if you can see, the trigger actually hits the trigger, the plastic trigger guard there, and you got to push it out of the way as you're pulling the trigger. So, the trigger itself, oops, about my camera, um, the trigger itself is polymer, uh, much like most of the rest of the gun, and the handguard's polymer. There are aftermarket uh, triggers and handguards you can get that are metal that probably will fix this problem, but the stock trigger as it comes to the factory is ugly, it's really ugly. Um, like I said, it's heavy, it creeps, and it has a very spongy feeling, probably due to being made out of polymer and having to actually push this trigger guard out of the way while you're pulling it. So if you're buying this expecting a great trigger or you've been hearing these, you know, raving reviews on the internet about how great this thing is, be prepared for a little bit of a letdown when you go to pull the trigger. It's not that great. Um, sorry, it just is. Um, I'm going to give you guys an honest review of this thing, and I like this gun, don't get me wrong, I'm going to keep this gun, overall I'm happy with it, but it does have some shortcomings that you guys need to be aware of, because a lot of stuff on the internet is pretty much just rave reviews, leading you to believe there's no downsides at all, and there is, I'm sorry, there just is. So, moving on from there, durability, we're on to a good subject now, durability on this gun has been great, I'm about 350 rounds in, no issues with finish wearing off or anything else. You know, I think a lot of that has to do with the gun itself being made out of polymer, a lot of it. So it's going to be much harder to show wear. It's going to look better, and it looks great. The gun itself pretty much looks brand new, and you'll see from the inset footage, I've been running around in rain and snow and in sun with this thing, and it is not rusted, it has not gotten scratched, it is holding up wonderfully. So, if you're a little upset that I went negative there for a while, I don't know if I got the word. Um, we'll bring it back to positive here. The gun's very durable, it's great. So, good on you, Keltec. Keep up the good work there. Sights, uh, or we'll talk about sights and accuracy. I don't know if we'll be able to get a good look down the sights here for you guys, but that's pretty much what you're dealing with for factory sights is peep in the rear and this big thing up front which we'll talk about rear peep's not bad it's kind of a standard like m16a2 size peep sight they're reasonably precise they're not the greatest thing in the world but they do fold down nicely and come back up when the gun's folded and hold zero actually very well i got this gun out of the box it was zero to work just fine uh here's a better look at the front sight i've had no problems with the front sight drifting around at all it's been holding up good. I just wish it was less ugly. <laughs> it's kind of a big gob on there, and it looks pretty bad in my opinion, but it works, so whatever. Um, 
the sights are all right. They are what they are. Uh, there's a lot of options out there now for mounting red dots on it. You know, you can put one up here, but you lose the ability to fold it. Uh, I think it's Midwest Industries makes one mount that folds out of the way now that I haven't tried. But I've been shooting these sights and this gun out to about 100 yards on some of my tests. With a human-sized silhouette, you can get good hits out to 100 yards. For a pistol caliber, I think that is just fine, and I have no intention on changing it. So sights and kind of talking about accuracy now. The accuracy is good. Um, I don't need paper targets to show you guys. The gun will shoot better than me. Uh, consistent hits out to 100 yards, I think, is about all you can ask for out of a pistol caliber, no matter what you're shooting it out of. They're just not designed to go that far. So sights and accuracy, I'd say, are good. Uh, moving on down the line to another positive subject for anyone who's still pissed off at me is capacity. This gun and the whole series of guns benefits from magazine interchangeability with whatever pistol you've chosen. This case being the Glock, I got my Glock 22 here, which matches up perfectly. You can either use the standard Glock mags, this is a 22 rounder, all right, or um, if you want to save some money, this is a ETS mag that's a clear polymer. And I did a video on these. Stop in and check it out if you want to know about know more about them. Long story short, I would use this as a training only mag. It works decently, but it's not nearly the quality that the Glock mags are. So check out the video if you want more info on that. I'm not going to waste time here with it. But capacity is great. Unfortunately, the gun ships with a 10 round mag, which fits flush right here. Um, I mean, I realize that Caltech sells these guns in areas with mag restrictions. I get that, and they're just doing it to save time instead of having to package guns differently. They're going to different locales. I get it. Uh, I would just like to get a 15 round mag right out of the box, but not the end of the world. Uh, moving on to caliber, you got two choices: nine or 40. Um, I went with the 40 because I have a 40 caliber pistol. I want it to match. And the 40, kind of like I touched on before, is a little rough on the cheek with the recoil there. And it's a little more expensive, but I'm already reloading for it, so I wasn't too worried. You know, 9, you're going to have probably a little more capacity, maybe a little less recoil. So, kind of pick what's going to match your pistol. I think that's the draw for a lot of people to buy this gun anyways. Uh, accessories. There is a pretty good amount of aftermarket accessories for these things. kel pretty well supported in that regard. You know, everything from the rubber buffer tube dampener here you can get little rubber covers for your charging handle to make it easier to grab there's midwest industries uh, sight mounts i talked about earlier any kind of rail mountable accessory is going to fit on here like the angle foregrip these side panels are also m-lock compatible you can see i've got a rail section here in case i decide i want to put a light or something on it so you can also put any m-lock accessory on the side there so accessories on this thing and there's also the trigger mods and trigger group accessories i talked about later or earlier uh so accessories are good there's a lot of aftermarket the sub 2000 the gen ones have been out for a long time the gen twos have been out for a decent amount of time now and they're well supported in the aftermarket so if you want to change something around with it go for it i would just caution you that you know, this is a great, lightweight, compact gun. Don't screw that up by hanging a bunch of crap on it. You know, do that to an AR or something else. It already weighs a little bit. Keep this thing light, keep it portable, and enjoy it. So, that's that rant over. Uh, reliability. This has been a pretty reliable gun. Um, I got it out of the box. I pulled it apart, lubed it, put it back together, and ran about 350 rounds through it. Uh, at about 300 rounds, it started to kind of have some sluggish ejection, and then I started to get some stove piping and some malfunctions every about once a mag. So I'm pretty happy with the reliability. Just make sure you're lubing it and cleaning it about every 300 rounds, and I think it'll be fine. Really lubricating it, I think, is the main thing. I don't think the gun's too dirty. When I open it up and look at it, it's not bad. I think it's mainly lubrication. So keep that in mind when you are running one of these. Just throw some CLP or some hops on it every couple hundred rounds and you'll be good. <laughs> Moving down here, is there anything else? You know, I had a lot of notes on this gun. I really like shooting it. I'm just trying to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, you know, I think that's about it, guys. Uh, overall, 
This is probably one of the harder guns I've gotten as far as a current production gun. It's hard to find. Demand's pretty high. Uh, MSRP on Keltex website is 500. I got this gun for 460. So, you know, hunt around if you can find one and you like it, get it. I'd recommend it for a truck gun or a car gun or a backpacking gun. They're not bad. Uh, really lightweight. Lots of accessories. Just keep in mind the ergonomics are not going to be super great because you're giving up a lot of that for the ability to fold it in half. Mag interchangeability with your pistol is great, but don't get too caught up on that or oversold on it. You know, it's handy, but it's not like the greatest thing in the world if you're thinking of taking this over like a AR. I'd take the AR over this. But for certain applications where size and weight are extremely important, I really like this gun. I think it's a fun gun. I think it's interesting. And if you have a chance get out there and buy one. Hopefully this has been helpful. I know I've been going on and on, but I really like this thing. So uh, yeah, go ahead and pick one up. And if you enjoyed the video, uh, go ahead and like or subscribe to the channel. Thanks.